This is Chef Mick. Got to get my chef coat on. Today is very important. Make sure you have something on, guys. Today is very important. We're dealing with some very hot oil. And, well, frankly, you don't want to get burned. Now, let me do this real quick. I've got a, a little housekeeping to do. Don, okay, I did it. I, I had to uh, put my, my producers on mute. And they're going to at least turn down their stuff or put on headphones so that I don't hear the feedback in my ear. Look at this. I miss buttoned my own jacket. Okay, anyway, we're dealing with very hot oil today, guys. My name's Chef Mick. This is Cooking for the Boys. I can't even figure out how to button my jacket. This is Cooking for the Boys Live. This is a live show today. Make sure your ovens are turned on and preheated. Let's preheat it to 400 today, guys. Now, you can do 350, but I'm doing 400. I wanted to get this stuff cooked. Okay, today we're dealing with fried chicken. Now, the chicken you can do on your own. The chicken you guys can do on your own. Um, the chicken you guys can do. I, I myself went out and bought frozen chicken breasts. I myself went out and bought frozen chicken breasts. And uh, let them defrost here in the sink. If you're going to do something like that, make sure you pat them dry. You need to get them nice and dry. Okay, I'm protected here. And I'm going to protect everybody else. Up here, that's right, I need to keep my hair out of all of this. So, I'm Chef Mick. This is my cool hat. Now I'm going to move you down so we can see my workstation, guys. Anyway, make sure you pat your chicken dry so that uh, you're not having a bunch of water and stuff just splatter everywhere. How's that? That looks pretty good for my workstation. A little help from my producer will tell me if it looks okay. Either one of my producers can tell me. Okay, I guess they're not going to talk to me today. Anyway, I think it looks okay. Let's get started. Remember, we want to pat the chicken dry. Very simple stuff here, guys. Here's a piece of chicken. This is a chicken breast right here. We're going to pat it down. We're going to pat it down nice and dry. This right here is my liquid. I have one egg, one egg, and in this case I have heavy cream. I would normally use milk, you can use buttermilk. The milk we happen to have in the house, the milk we happen to have in the house is 1%, <clears throat> which is basically flavored water. It's horrendous. And, uh, but that's what we use. So I went ahead and used some heavy cream in here so that it can really hold on to the, to the chicken. This in this bowl right now is just flour. I'm adding salt. I don't know about you guys. I think I think Emerald used to say this. I don't know about you guys, but where I get my flour, it is not seasoned. So I'm going to add salt. I'm also going to add pepper. Pepper. Love some pepper. That's my pepper mill. Everything's bigger in Texas. <clears throat> That's my pepper mill. Salt and pepper. Now, what you do with your breading is up to you. This is my oil. This big pan right here is my oil. It's already on. It's nice and hot. So I'm ready to go here. But you guys are not ready to go. Now, I'm also going to throw in, this is <clears throat> roasted garlic and red bell pepper. This is the spice I buy at Marshall's by the Gourmet Collection. It is an incredible spice, and it goes great as, uh, as the breading. Now, we, now, see, I ran out of it, which means I'm going to have to go back to Marshall's. Oh. An excuse to go to Marshall's. All of them, they have a lot of different ones. This is one of my favorite ones. And I um, use it all the time. So let's talk about this oil in this big pan. I told you get a big pan and you need a lot of oil. I'm going to show you why here. I'm going to use I'm going to use this pan sort of as my uh, demonstration. Okay? What you do is if you put in too much oil if you put it, I'm, put, I'm running water, I know, I'm sorry. Okay, this is my oil. It's actually water, but we're going to pretend it's my oil. So what happens is if you put in too much oil, and it's nice and hot, and then you put in a bunch of chicken, what you're doing is you're displacing the oil, and it's rising. So we want to make sure we don't have that much. So what I did for you guys today is we're going to start the chicken in the oil, 
and then we're going to bake it <coughs> in the oven. <coughs> Excuse me. And what that does, what that does is it allows me to use less oil in this pan. So instead of having the, the oil up to, you know, over, you know, almost a half, you have it about a quarter. Now, this is just enough oil that it, the chicken itself doesn't have to sink and be underwater or submerged under oil. So this is why this is why we're doing it this way. And this way, you don't have oil coming over the sides and starting this huge oil fire. So, easy. Okay? One of the things we try to remember is we have a wet hand and we have a dry hand. The wet hand handles this, which, oh is fantastic. Look at that heavy cream just clinging to my chicken. Then we drop it in here. We're not going to save this flour later, so you might as well use it all up right now. Okay? And we bread it, and we bread it, and we bread it. Like that. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, I've seen people, you know, double, you know, put it back in again and do it again. Whichever way you feel like doing it, I only do it once. And then I'm putting in an oil that's already ready to go. Let me let me show you something, guys. Let me see if I can do this the right way. <clears throat> you can see it, but I have my oil turned down. It's already under medium. It's been it's hot already. It's gonna fry like that. You can see how the chicken is not all the way in there. Now let me put this back over here. Excuse me for a cup. Ah, there you go. Let me do the rest of my chicken real quick. Now, here's the deal. I'm doing this, and see my dry hand stays dry, it just drops the stuff in. I'm doing this, I'm going to put it in here, and I'll turn it in a minute. But after I do this, then I can clear this, and we can start working on our potatoes, which really need to get a work on. And, and, what's our other side dish? Oh yeah, onion rings. Onion rings. So we're going to work on potatoes, and we're going to work on onion rings. Onion rings will be the last thing we work on, so don't worry about it. Oh, oh, there's nothing like the smell of chicken frying. It is incredible. All right, and here we go. We'll put one more in here. I've got one more. i got one more to do. You're going to watch me do all four of them. Now, I'm not going to get rid of this. I'm not going to dump it because I'm going to use it for my uh, onion rings. Yeah. So... One of my producers is talking to somebody on the other side, and I thought he was talking to me, guys. I'm sorry. I was distracted there. I believe that producer was Dario Miguel, but that's cool. Okay, now we're done. We got those in there. We're going to flip them around in a minute. Now, <laughs> now uh, let me wash my hands really fast. I'm sorry for the noise, guys, but I've got to get this stuff off my hands. <laughs> All right. Okay, we're going to come back. We're going to flip that in a minute. Let's get this out of my way. And let's bring in my favorite kitchen tool, the knife. All right, let's get this out of the way. There you go. Now, I told you guys buy golden. Yeah, we didn't really get it on here. I don't have any cross-contamination going because I didn't get the chicken on here. The chicken stayed in bowls. <clears throat> Let's get golden potatoes real quick. Three like this, and then just cut them up like this, okay? And throw them in here. The water's already hot. Ouch. In fact, I'm going to turn it up a little bit. Let's do it again. This one's a little bigger, so I'm going to do four. And then we're not making mashed potatoes, so you do not have to <clears throat> boil it till they're very, very soft. You can leave it a little al dente. Which means it has a little, which technically means to the tooth. It means it has a bite to it, like we do on our uh, on our pasta. And then I'm going to use red potato. I'm doing it for coloring, guys. It can cook at the same time as the other one, but I like the uh, I like to mix my colors of gold and red. And uh, let's throw those in here. Throw these in here. I'll do another one. Now, if you're serving two people, this is more than enough. Actually, if you're serving three or three or four people, you probably got enough already. If you're going to serve six people, of course, you're going to do more chicken. And the potatoes, I would do about, because they're so small, to serve six people, I would do at least ten potatoes. I'm doing more stuff here because whatever I don't eat, my beautiful wife gets, 
<clears throat> gets to take home or gets to take to work tomorrow as lunch. So if I make extra, then she has a nice lunch and then she's all happy with me. And well, you know how that goes. Okay. So here we go. Now I'm gonna bring you. I'm gonna bring you guys along again. Dun dun dun. Look at this. Okay. You see my chicken? Yes, you do. Now watch. I'm gonna flip this over. Ah, this chicken is broken in half basically, but don't worry about it. Look how look how wonderful that looks there. Okay, this is the second one I threw in. I have I have it, it I have my oil hot, but then it cooled off on me. I'm gonna heat it up a little bit more now. I'm gonna need it a little hotter to do the uh, to the, do the onion rings. This is what happens when I am the only camera person available. But I want you guys to see this. Oh, look at that side of the chicken on all of them. Isn't that, isn't that fantastic, guys? <clears throat> now, remember, the chicken is nowhere near cooked all the way through. We're only cooking on the outside. The oven's going to take care of the rest. This is our pot of boiling potatoes. And you can see the water's ready to boil, but I need those potatoes to soften up. Now we're going back over here. While the potatoes are softening up, I already have my oven preheated. Let's talk about what I'm going to do with the chicken real quick before I cut up my jalapenos. The, the normal thing to do that a lot of people would do, they would get out a cookie sheet or, or you know, a baking sheet covered in foil or whatever. You would put these on here and then put it in there. The problem is when it's done baking, even though the grease has come out of there, the chicken is still sitting in the grease in the pan. So unless you have some kind of small wire to go over this, you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to use this. Okay? Some people do have the, the proper equipment. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you what I what I did. It's a little riskier, but hey, high risk, high rewards, and that's what we're all about. So what I did, and this is my oven. I'm gonna lose a little bit of heat. What I did is I used one one of the uh one of the what are these things called oh uh, whatever anyway i covered this bottom one in foil and then i'm gonna have the top one up here okay the wire rack thank you and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to place the chicken right here on the on the top one above the foil and let it let the oil drip down onto the foil <laughs> and by the time and then when it's ready and done, it's not going to have any oil left in the chicken. It's going to be nice and crispy, and all that oil is going to be down there. Yes, it's a little extra cleanup, but you'll be happy about it. So, potatoes aren't ready. Let's get let's get our onions ready for the onion ring. We don't need that top part, and this time we don't need this part either. Okay, all we need is a little bit here so we can so we can peel our onion. I did this the other day at the restaurant. And I had onions stuck under my nail for, I don't know, for, for a week. I had to find, my wife finally had to remove it. It, like, it was like an onion splinter under my nail. I thought I was being tortured every day. It was horrendous. All right, so we're peeling the onion. Now, not only can you do onion rings, you know, if you want to fry something else, I mean, if, if I wanted to, I guess I could pull out one of the pickles I have in there jar of pickles I have and, and fry some pickles. But I'm going to do onion rings. And because I'm going to do onion rings, I like them thicker. I don't want thin onion ring. I like a thick onion ring to hold the batter. So we're going to do it like this. Very simple. And then you would take all of this wonderful liquid again and just drop all of the onions in here. You can separate them. Separate them like that. Push them through like this. Drop them in the liquid. And then we're going to go ahead and batter them up after the chicken goes into the oven. All right. We're looking good over here on the chicken. The onions will be taken care of in a little while. Okay. So remember what I said. I want to put the chicken in the oven. Now, I just want to make sure that both sides look really brown or look well. This side could use a little more time. Okay, so we're going to leave it here 
seems to have a hot spot on this side, so I'm going to push it off to that hot spot and let it go. I'm going to give it a little more time. So now, let's get ready and get our... You know, if I had a producer living here with me, instead of thousands of miles away in Texas, then I could get them to do this and I wouldn't have to fix up my home kitchen by myself. Okay, garlic. Remember what I said, you can use fresh garlic or the garlic in a jar. For this one, I prefer the fresh one. Every once in a while, there's something I like that I want to do fresh one because I'm not going to mince it up so small. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to use big chunks. And then after I do big chunks, I'm going to make them smaller. And that's it. That's it. That's the size I want my garlic. Okay? That's the size I want my garlic. Now, <clears throat> we're going to do another one. Da, da, da. Okay. We're going to do another one. Let's cut off that little piece that we don't like. Let's make these like this. Turn it sideways. These are big cloves, so that's good for me. Okay, look at this. Garlic. Okay, so I got chunky garlic. Chunky garlic, that's what I wanted. Now, let's put these things in the oven. Let's put this chicken into the oven. All right, here we go. Remember, I have two racks. I'm going to throw them both out at the same time so that I'm not spilling oil everywhere. And then I'm going to transfer this using my tong. I'm going to transfer it onto the rack above the foil. Using my tong. Oh, how beautiful is that? Now, the important part is, of course, that I put it above the foil. And when I push it back in, because I have an electric oven and I have all those elements down at the bottom. So when I put it back in, ah, I need to push them back in at the same time so that it's always above the corner and it doesn't hit my elements. Bam, my oven is at 400. I've got chicken in the oven. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit. This is wonderful. That's what we're going to throw our, <coughs> our onion rings in in a minute. Now onion rings are not going to take that long, so we're going to we're going to wait. Now this is already boiling, okay, okay. But I said I wanted it a little al dente, and frankly, if you can see how how that is, hold on. Can you say that again? Okay. All right, uh, my producers are talking to me, and I'm trying to hear what they have to say. What did you say? Okay. Now, remember, the chicken's in the oven, and that's what it looks like inside my oven. Isn't that wonderful? All right. We got a nice close-up of the chicken. The potatoes are basically ready, guys. You saw how easy they were to cut and, and split right now. So I'm turning that off. Trusty colander, my friends. A trusty colander. We're gonna put this in the sink. We're gonna we're gonna drain the potatoes. We gotta drain them right now. Okay. Now we're done with this pan. We don't need this pan anymore. So just put it wherever it is that keeps it out of your way. This is our colander. This is our colander full of hot potatoes. You can see all the steam rising off of there and everything else. Before I do anything with the potatoes, let me cut up my uh, my jalapenos. I told you guys I wanted fresh jalapenos, not the kind that are already pickled in a jar. Okay, that first of all the pickling changes the flavor. Second of all, it's also very wet and hard to work with. If you're using your cutting jalapenos for the first time, you're going to get a lot of this hot stuff on your fingers. And if you rub your face, your mouth, your eyes, whatever, it's really going to burn. So either wear gloves 
or wash your hands immediately afterwards, or just be like me and man up. Now, we're cutting long strips. I do not want the jalapeno to disappear inside my potatoes. So I'm going to keep them long strips and then cut these long strips right in half. So you see how big these strips of jalapenos are? Part of the, jala the garlic jalapeno potato is that you can actually see the jalapeno, not just taste it. I want you to see it. I want the potatoes are going to get the taste of it already, but you should enjoy it also. There's one. Now let's do one more. Because frankly, you can never do too many jalapenos. I mean, I, I, I myself enjoy them. If you're not big on jalapenos or if it's a little too hot for you, then just stop at one. Okay? All you can add is garlic and potatoes. So really, you're eating jalapeno, and so you really need to like it if you're going to do this. I promise you, it is an excellent dish. We had it yesterday. In preparation for today, I had to make it, you know, even I have to practice my my food. If I don't, then I get on here and I really embarrass myself. So I made sure I practiced this one yesterday, along with my chicken and my onion rings. <laughs> okay, I practiced the whole thing. So I'm going to eat the same thing two nights in a row. <laughs> All right, guys. Now, look at that. See, plenty of jalapeno. There's plenty of garlic in there. We're not going to do it in that same one. I'm bringing out my trusty, my trusty green pan here. That's going to be the pan I use for this. I'm going to put it back here and turn it on already, just to try to get it there. This oil is still nice and hot. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start and go ahead and start doing our uh, potatoes. We're not ready. We're not ready to do the onion rings, but we're going to leave the oil on. We want. We don't want it to cool off on us. Let's work on the potatoes. Let me check on my beautiful chicken. Oh, my chicken looks wonderful. In fact, I'm going to flip it over. I need to turn on, I probably need to turn on my vent here in a minute. But let me see if I can't flip these things over. Uh, you know what? I don't need to turn them over, guys. Uh, they're going to be beautiful just the way they are. All right, guys. So let's start with potatoes. Now, a little bit of oil, okay? If you want to use olive oil, that's fine, but I already got the canola oil out, so I'm just going to use some canola oil, okay? A little bit of oil on here. Not a lot, just enough to cover the bottom. Just enough to cover the bottom. That is, really, that is all the oil we need is just to cover the bottom. Now, if you're going to throw in your garlic and your jalapeno first, this oil has to be first hot. Second of all, you have to be careful because the garlic burns right away. The jalapeno is going to start popping. Pop, 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 and you're going to be a little freaked out. But what I do is I put it in there first for one reason. I want to infuse the taste of that jalapeno and that garlic into that oil. Because then I put the oil all around those potatoes and finish cooking them that way. And it's already infused. You can hear that I have a little bit of water in the pan. You remember that? So that's why you hear all that noise. Now, these are the potatoes I have. But we're not going to put them in like this. We're going to take this little thing right here. And we're going to smash them up. Now, we're not going to mash them into mashed potatoes. We're just trying to break up a few of them to give us more surface to work with, more to collect the, the wonderful flavor that we're about to put into it. Okay? So that's all we wanted to do. Just a little bit. Now, if you notice, when I did my fried chicken, guys, I did not do it. All I did was, was my flavored, or my uh, flavor, my seasoned flour. I did not even use the breadcrumbs that I brought. So I'll use the breadcrumbs on my... I'll use the breadcrumbs on my... Uh, onion rings, and then you'll be like, oh, that's what the bread comes to do. Because I, you know, I was so happy and excited to get started, I didn't put bread crumbs on there. All right, we're ready to go. So, this is all it should look like, guys. This is all it should look like. It's just smashed up. You can still see big chunks, and then you see some smashed parts. That's what it, that's what we want it to look like. Now, let's get this over here. This oil is kind of hot, but I'm going to put it in anyway. 
There we go. Now let's move this around a little bit. Now so far the only thing we've added, we haven't added any salt. There's only salt in the water when I when I boil the potatoes. So I'm gonna throw some salt in there and some salt on my potatoes. Then I'm gonna throw some onion. Onion on my potatoes. Onion in here. Onion and potatoes. Onions on my onion rings. Onion. Pepper. I don't know why I said onion. I said onion like five times before I realized I was saying the wrong word. Pepper. I'm sorry, black pepper. I just said onion because I was watching my onion rings. It took me that long to figure out I was saying the wrong word. Okay. Now, and then, you know what? Let me show you. Let me show you something here, guys. Because you can't really see it. Let me show it to you. But look, you can see how the garlic is already browned. You can see the garlic browning. You can see the uh, the jalapenos peeling off right here. This one back here, you can see the skin peeling and, and it, you know, coming apart. That's what we want. That's the look we want before we throw the potatoes in. Because that means all of that flavor is already inside of our oil. So now we're going to throw the potatoes in. We're doing a really good job on this, guys. Now yeah, let's throw the potatoes in. Man, well, my, my wife isn't a big fan of the, uh, the panko breadcrumbs that I use. So it's okay not to use them on the, uh, on the chicken, even though I'm a huge fan. Now, don't let's just throw the potato in and let it sit. Let's move it around to make sure we get the oil all over it before we let it sit. When it sits, it's going to start sticking, and that's what we want. We want it to sort of brown and stick to the bottom, and then we'll move it around again. We want it to get all nice and mushy. But we still have big chunks to eat, and that's, that's the beauty of this, this dish right here. That is the beauty of this dish right here, is that it's mushy but chunky, easy to eat, yet it does, it's, it's uh, got really good texture to it. That's beautiful, guys. Okay, so potatoes being made. They're going to cook a little on the bottom. We're going to flip them a little bit. It's going to be good. That's, oil is still on, still hot. Onions, we're going to bread the onions right now. But like I said, remember, I said I forgot to use my uh, panko breadcrumbs. So I'm going to open, I'm going to use my, the rest of my breadcrumbs right now for the onion rings. That's right, the onion rings. I said the wrong word earlier. There you go, breadcrumbs. I am a big fan of the panko. I just love their texture, I love the look of it, and I love what it does to the food. All right. Breadcrumbs. Now, get my knife out of the way. Now, this is as simple as what we were doing with the chicken. We're dunking this. I've already got my, what was my dry hand has become my wet hand for some reason, but that's okay. Now, we're going to take these that are nice and wet, and we're going to dump them in here. Okay, and then we're going to bread these up. And yes, maybe you make a mess, maybe you don't. I'm pretty good at making a mess, so... Apparently, I'm making a big mess. And then, we're going to put these, bread, these onion rings that are nicely breaded up here. And we're going to drop them in that oil that's still sitting there that we use for the chicken. They're going to cook. We're gonna, now, remember, guys, the oil, as you drop stuff in it, especially when we're dropping the chicken in, the more you drop into it, the colder the oil gets. So you got to make sure that it's ready to go early, because that way when you cool it down, you're not cooling it down so much that it just makes everything soggy. Now we're going to take the rest of these, the rest of these, and put it in here. Put it in here. Put it in here. Now, let's take my dry hand and let's flip. Ah, look at that. Now, let me show you what I just did here, because this is delicious. Uh, I just dropped a piece of tomato, potato, but that's cool. I'll pick it up in a second. Okay, watch this. I flipped 
I flipped them over and now you can see how nice and brown it is on the bottom. I'm letting it get nice and brown, then I'll flip it again and brown it some more. Okay, onion rings going. We're gonna turn those over in a second. And of course, here's my workspace. And of course, we got chicken going. So before I put the other set of onion rings in there, clean my hand one more time. Grab this. Now, we do need something to put the onion rings in. And uh, something you should note, if you don't, you know, like if you have paper towels that you're trying not to use a whole roll, so you need something to soak up all this oil, then use a newspaper. Get a big bowl that you're going to put your onion rings in. I'm going to move this back a little bit. We need a big bowl. Here we go. Now, this is, is going to be our bowl for the onion ring. And if you, uh, if you don't feel like using all of your, you got to clean the bowl out a little bit, it's been sitting on top of my shelf. But if you don't feel like using just a whole bunch of paper towels, there's nothing wrong when you're making onion rings and french fries, nothing wrong with drying them on newspaper. But I don't mean like a magazine, don't go out and buy like, you know, the latest <coughs> uh, People magazine and then come out here and dump all your stuff on it. I mean actual newspaper. Actual paper from newspapers. Oh, this is wonderful. This is for, oh, yes. You know, all this food, it's going to be really good for you. Well, maybe not healthy for you, but it's going to be really good and you're really going to impress some people. And I really would like to hear from you guys. You can send it to my Twitter, Cooking for the Boys, at Cooking for the Boys on Twitter. You can send me a message on my Facebook, even though my Facebook is for Rick Luce on my page. Cooking for the Boys is part of my Facebook. You can send it to uh, to me. Just send it to chef at rickluceo.com. And that's my email with my uh, website. So here we go. Here we go. We're going to pull the first few out right here. And then we're going to drop a few more. Now, this has seemed to cool off a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and turn up the heat so that when I drop the next ones in, it's nice and hot, and uh, and they can get nice and crispy right away. So I turned up the heat on that. Let me bring this plate to you guys before I put the other ones in. Okay, now I'm going to lift this up a little bit, and those are onion rings right there. Lightly breaded, okay? The coating didn't stay on all the time, but it doesn't always. I'm not doing a beer batter like they do at the, like they order for the, all those restaurants. We're doing just the same batter we did for the chicken. Now let's, let's throw our other batch of onion rings in there. Okay. And, of course, you know, we want to, we want to make sure. So if we wanted to actually batter them up better, we'd just throw the rest of this in here. Get that out of our way, and then soak our onion rings in all of this stuff. Make the batter even thicker if that's what we really wanted. If that's what you really, really, really have to have, but it's not going to work too well today. But that's cool. These things are going to come out really nice. And then, and then, we're going to come over here. We're going to drop them in here. Drop it, drop it, drop it like it's hot. You know what kids say? That's one of those saying things that I'm not allowed to say because I'm too old or something like that. When I say stuff that my boys say I'm too old to be saying. Okay. Now, technically, technically, anything else you throw in here, the, uh, the batter that isn't clean but is still a batter, will become something that they call hush puppies. So, you know, if you wanted to go in here and you actually wanted to finish up all this stuff that you see here and just make them and form into little round balls, when that's done, you can put, you can fry these things and make little hush puppies. Nothing wrong with that either. People love hush puppies. Okay. Let's clean off our hands one more time. Let's check 
Let's check our chicken. Hold on. Let me flip this over because it's been browning on that side for a while. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <coughs> wow. The jalapeno is the one making this pop a little bit. Absolutely, yes. Let's turn this off completely. We have onion rings ready. Let me check. Let me check the chicken. Oh, the chicken looks fantastic, guys. Now, here's the deal. If you're not worried about it, and I'm not, if you're not worried about it, let's bring this over here. Oh, I hate to do this to myself, but I'm going to flip this over, put it on the clean side of this board. Then we can just use the knife. If you're not worried about it, if you're not worried about the presentation part of it, or if you're going to cover it up with something, use the knife, cut it open, and check this out, guys. Check this out. Let me see. Can we see it? You, can, you don't see any more red. You don't see any more pink. Okay, it looks... This is hard to do. Man, I'm glad I'm not a doctor. I guess you guys should be, too. All right. So, technically... Basically, your chicken is ready. All right. So, let's flip over these things. All right, we got the little chicken. Chicken is ready, my friends. Let's turn this up. Like I said, this wasn't hot enough, but now, <clears throat> now it's proving it to me over and over again. Okay. The potatoes are ready. Onion rings are ready. Chicken is ready. Let's go ahead and uh, let's plate this puppy. All right, so why don't we put chicken here? These beautiful looking red and yellow potatoes right there. Of course, they have the garlic and the jalapeno in them. They are beautiful. But then top, top it off on this side with a couple of the very crunchy, very pretty onion rings. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Very simple, very easy. It's fried chicken without having to be up here worrying about the oil overflowing. All of the juices running into the oil is going to be causing it to spatter and stuff. All we did was fry it here, bake it in the oven. I just canceled that. <clears throat> and this is what we got. Tell me, tell me that this does not look great, guys. Look at that. The fried chicken, the potatoes, onion rings. I tell you what. That is a full meal right there. Now you guys are back to looking at me. That's a full meal, guys. My name is Chef Mick. This is Cooking for the Boys in Texas, answering your questions, following your progress on the chat, on Twitter, and on Facebook. We have uh, Duran and Dario. Thank you guys for helping me out today. And we will be back next week. Also, remember, I have little mini episodes. I did one yesterday. I'll do another one tomorrow. No mini episode today because we had a full episode. These mini episodes are just to keep you informed on kitchen and other things that I have going on. And uh, please, let all your friends, let your family tell everybody, go to ricklucio.com and check out all this wonderful stuff that you see here. All of these shows will be posted up there. Now, also, remember, two weeks from today, two weeks from today, today's the second, which makes next week something like the ninth or I don't know, and then after that, the 16th, a complete Thanksgiving meal, guys, from, fin from start to finish, turkey and everything, right here, live, on the air, the only place you're going to see it live on the air, guys. All those other shows, they all, oh, watch what I'm doing here, and this is how I did the turkey yesterday. Uh-uh, we're doing it all right here in front of you, Okay. Will I cheat a little bit? Yes. But trust me, it'll all be done right in front of you. Now, thank you all for joining. This is, of course, fried chicken. Garlic, jalapeno potatoes, onion rings. I am Chef Mick. If you know how to cook, you can marry for looks. Thank you all for joining me, guys. We'll see you all next week. All right. Peace.